Category 5 TV with Hillary Rumble, Krista Wells, Eric Kidd, Rachel Zhu, and Robbie Ferguson. And now, here's a clip from Category 5 Technology TV. Brought to you by EcoAlkaline's Environmentally Responsible Batteries, cat5.tv slash eco. Welcome to the Category 5 Technology TV studio. Today, we're not just taking you on a tour, kind of like an exclusive behind the scenes uh, to show you how we do things here at Category 5 TV, but we're also going to be showing you how you can do a similar setup using Telestream Wirecast, which is software available for both the PC and Mac computers. So uh, stick around. First of all, we're going to start things off with a quick tour of the studio. Working our way down into the Category 5 studio, you'll see Major Tom, our space fish. Some people have asked uh, where he's been these days, and that's where you'll find him. Telestream Wirecast up on my screen controls all of our cameras, and you'll see that I've got a Microsoft LifeCam studio in front of me and two there. And uh, also the demo computer screen is captured using uh, their software, uh, Desktop Presenter. And there is the co-host screen on the left, and that allows Hillary and other co-hosts to follow the chat room and also read email, of course. You ready? Ready to roll, right. ready to rock. There's our cat, Winston, who sometimes hangs out at our feet. And, of course, Backstage Pass, the camera that allows you to watch behind the scenes as things are taking place. What self-respecting geek studio would be complete without a serious collection of Star Trek novels? <laughs> and, of course, our main broadcast system. This is where all the cameras plug into. And it is an Intel Core i7-2600K running inside the Thermaltake Level 10 Snow Edition chassis, and as I said, using Telestream Wirecast on the Windows platform. This is kind of what it looks like from the studio, as far as when someone is standing in the studio and seeing the show taking place live. They can see everything up on that screen there, and that can sometimes be used by the camera person, as it is in this case, but also you'll notice that all of our cameras are stationary, and yet we're able to move them around. Here's the chat room. Somebody's watching the chat room on their cell phone while watching the show live from the studio. And as I'm saying, uh, you'll see that the cameras are all stationary, but yet we can change the angles. So we're going to show you how to do that in just a few minutes using Telestream Wirecast. Very cool stuff. There's our feet, where Mr. Winston sometimes hangs out. And again, kind of the wide shot. And you'll see all these poles sticking up from the ground. We've got lighting rigs and all that kind of stuff. The zoom on the screen there is provided by Compiz, which is a part of Linux on our demo system. And that demo system is the black one there in the frame, uh, also in a Thermaltake chassis, the Zazer 6. So let's take a look at how all this comes together and makes Category 5 Technology TV possible. One of the questions I get most often about Category 5 and how we do things here is how we're able to get the sound so good during a live broadcast. And a big part of that is our Behringer 1002B console. And this can be done with any kind of console, but of course, uh, this is nice and portable and does a great job. It's got phantom powered, and you'll see that we're plugged in directly to XLR. This XLR cable goes out to an adapter, which plugs into my headset microphone directly. We're not using any wireless microphones. Uh, we've done that in the past and had some interference, and that's not a good situation. So from this board, you'll see that we've actually got uh, we've got the uh, quarter inch to XLR outputs, and those XLRs go to uh, an ad well, they actually go into the back of a BBE Sonic Maximizer. The Maximizer is a signal processor which uh, basically cleans up the signal, makes it sound real nice. And then, of course, it goes straight into an Ultramizer Pro from Behringer. And this is a compressor. It's an audio compressor so that if I speak loudly, watch this. Da, 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 da. The red is actually basically turning down my volume, so it will never clip, and it just keeps things nice and level, keeps things sounding great, and if I get loud, it doesn't matter. It's not going to pop your speakers on the other end. So that's a very, very important component of our audio setup. From the Sonic Maximizer, our compressor, it goes straight out into the back of the computer. You'll see here, going into the blue, we actually have a cable that is coming directly off of the back of that. Uh, device itself off the back of the compressor. And here, while I've got you here, I'll show you our cameras are in fact going into USB 3 cards. I've got them staggered and I've only got one camera going into each card. These are USB 3 cards uh, because they are going to give us the best throughput uh, on, any, uh, on, on any camera. The reason that they're on uh, individual channels, the reason that we have one card per camera is to make sure that we don't max out the, uh, the bus on the computer itself. Cooling is a big deal to us, so we have the Thermaltake Frio cooling our CPU, 
and down from there you see the uh, the USB 3 cards there and one of the things that you'll notice is the cable management on the Thermaltake level 10 is extremely clean this is also a big thing uh, a big part of our cooling system uh, having the fact that most of the cables are well hidden behind the uh, the main board there uh, the fact is just plain and simple the airflow is good and so we get a very very cool Core i7. Next up is our demo system in a Thermaltake Zazer 6. Another awesome chassis from them. Die hard with liquid cooling and uh, retractable ceiling to change your liquid cooling. And of course, just a fairly basic system, which is the system that I bring up on the air right here whenever uh, we want to show demos of Linux. Next up is our lighting, and you'll see that we have proper studio lighting here at Category 5 TV, and it's very important when you're broadcasting live that you do have proper lighting. You're not going to be able to do correction uh, after the fact like you can with pre-recorded and things like that. Uh, proper lighting in the studio is extremely important, especially when using digital imaging devices such as digital video cameras, webcams, etc., because the lighting plays a big part in your actual frame rate. Our cameras for ultimate maneuverability are actually mounted on microphone booms and we have these adapters that convert them over to uh, standard camera mounts. This is the Microsoft LifeCam Studio 1080p webcam and of course it's able to capture in full 1080p and does a fairly nice job as well. And having it on this boom allows us to have ultimate flexibility as far as making sure that we're able to look like we're looking at a camera even though we're in fact looking at a computer screen. I think if you want to start an online broadcast, here are three things that you absolutely critically must have. First thing, you've got to be able to take the cameras and bring them into some form of a system that's going to allow you to switch between the cameras, between video clips and uh, even images and text. You need to be able to seamlessly transition between those. And the reason for that is because when you're live, you don't have the opportunity to do post-production, to be able to edit those things in after the fact because people are watching live. Second thing, of course, as a live show on the internet, you have to be able to source that to a service provider such as Ustream.tv or Justin.tv. You've got to be able to use your internet connection to send that feed out over the internet and then let it be rebroadcast to your viewers from there. Third thing, and this is something that I learned the hard way when we first started the show uh, back in 2007, is that you have to be able to record to disk. I say that I learned the hard way because what happened in our case is, you'll remember up until episode 11, we were actually streaming to Ustream.tv and using that as our recorded video. So we'd hit record as we were streaming it to the server. So if, for example, my internet connection would go down, all of a sudden I've got these pieces of files saved on the Ustream server and I'd have to download them, splice them together, re-encode and upload them and that could be a bit of a nightmare. But here's the other thing. When you're streaming to a server online, you're limited based on your internet connection. So in my case it was about four to six hundred K that I was able to uh, to upload as far as my upstream goes. So if you can imagine if I was recording just from that file, now I've got a file that's say six hundred K. 600 kilobits per second, I mean. So in that case, that's really generally, I mean, that's low quality. It's good for live streaming, but it's not very good for on-demand viewing uh, and being able to watch it full screen on a TV, for example, from an RSS feed uh, on a set-top box or uh, maybe Miro Internet TV. So that's why you absolutely need to have the ability, this is my third point, to record directly to disk. Because then you can go 2,000 kilobits per second. You can go 3,000 kilobits per second if you're moving around a whole lot and you need that kind of frame, uh, that kind of bit rate. Um, so that is essential. What's very, very cool is that Telestream Wirecast is not only able to do these three things, but it's able to do them very, very well. I'm going to show you tonight as we're using a Microsoft LifeCam Studio. In fact, we have three of them here set up for the demonstration. I'm going to show you how to set these up in Telestream Wirecast, and we're going to look at some of the more advanced features as well. Uh, this is by no means a, a de facto tutorial on how to use Wirecast, but it's something to get you started and to show you that these things are possible with this amazing software. 
All right, so this is what Telestream Wirecast basically looks like out of the box. First thing I want to do is turn on my layout and master audio so that I can see levels as they come in. Also, layout and output statistics helps me to see my frames per second, CPU usage, and things like that, my data rate. Next up, I want to add my first camera. So I'll click on the camera icon down here, and you'll see that I've already named my cameras uh, uniquely. So Robbie Shot, Main Shot, and Coho Shot. I'm going to add the Robbie Shot. What's really, really cool about that is that Telestream Wirecast, even though I have three Microsoft LifeCam Studio cameras, it identifies each one individually so that I can rename uh, and actually give it something that's a little friendlier like this one I call the Robbie Cam because it's my camera. So there we go. So you'll see that I am in a four over three uh, mode right now. So first thing I want to do is go sources, show source settings, click on the Robbie Cam, and you'll see that out of the box it's giving me 320 by 240. So let's change it right up to 1080p. There it goes. Okay, so now I've got a 1080p source, still within a 4 over 3 or 3 over 2 window, so what I need to do is change my canvas size. And in Telestream Wirecast, click on File, Canvas Size, and pick one of these 16 over 9 options for a 16 over 9 camera. I'm going to go with 1080p because, of course, this is a 1080p camera. So now that I've got my 1080p source running on a 1080p canvas, what do I want to know? I want to know if I can add more than one camera. So back at Telestream Wirecast, again, let's add another shot, our main shot. There's another camera here, and you'll see that I'm getting cut off because it is also in 4 over 3 mode. So go to Sources and Show, sh show <laughs> Source Settings. Go into Main, and there you go. Main, of course, is just the name of the camera as I named it. You can name your cameras, like I have, nice and unique, by right-clicking on them here and going Rename Source. Close out of that, and now I've got two 16 over 9 1080p true camera cam uh, cameras coming into Telestream Wirecast. Okay, next camera, co-host shot. There it is. Let's change the settings. 1080p, and now it's there. Okay, I'm going to switch to cut mode here. Of course, we've got things like bowstring. How cool is that? Right? On the fly CGI. And then, of course, just straight cuts as well. Live cameras, of course. So we can see that we can actually run multiple cameras in 1080p mode here in Telestream Wirecast on this system. So that's a great thing. But let's say we don't need 1080p. We're doing a web broadcast. So do we really need to be in full 1920 by 1080 p Chances are pretty good that 720p may do nicely for what you're going to do. In fact, it works very well for uh, us here at Category 5 TV. The advantage to using 720p over 1080p is clear. You're able to use lossless digital zoom. Let's take a look at how that works. I'm going to remove these sources, and I'm going to change my canvas to 720p. Now there's my camera. You'll see that it looks exactly as it did. However, my canvas size is 720p. So what that means is anything that I do in Telestream Wirecast, if I'm saving to disk, is going to be a canvas size of 720p. You'll remember from Photoshop or using GNU Image Manipulation Program, if you take a photo that is this big and make it this big, it's going to lose quality. However, if you take a photo that's this big and you make it this big, it's going to stay the same as far as quality goes. You're not going to lose anything because you're going down, not up. That's what we can do here. We have a 1080p source. We can take it down to 720p, and we can do some really cool things. Using the analogy of the uh, image in your image editor, think about something that's this big, and instead of resizing it, think about cropping it, creating a canvas that's this big, and being able to move it around that bigger image. So you're still not losing any quality. It's still this big as far as the image is concerned, but you're able to move around and look like you're zooming in on that image. Check this out. So now I have, if I go to Sources, Source Settings, go to the Robbie camera, you'll see I have a source that is 1080p. So that's a full 1080. And I have a canvas that is only 720p. So now let's take our camera. I'm going to take this off of the tripod here. And I'm going to put it on this little thing here. And I'm going to put it right in front of my computer monitor. And with this graphic up on the screen, we can see that the green is 1080p and the red is 720p. So let's fit the outer edges, so the left and right edge of the green, into my frame so that it's just touching the edge of my camera frame. Remember that the camera is capturing a 1080p. 
There we go. Okay. I need to also make sure that I can see the red. Okay. I don't need to fill the entire frame. Now I'm going to bring up the shot editor and I'm going to hold in my alt key in Telestream Wirecast and pull back. That's going to zoom in, move it around a little bit. And I want to get that red portion and do the exact same kind of thing. I want it to touch the edges of my frame without going over because that's lossless. So what I'm basically doing is I'm zooming in digitally on a 1080p source all the way to 720p. That's about as close as I can go. So now, if I click here, that is now my frame. I'm going to move it back up into the frame there. There we go. So let's put this back on the tripod and see how this affects us. So now you see that the camera is actually very, very close to me. So here's what's really cool. You can see that, for example, my chin is kind of a little bit too low. There's too much room up here above my head. So I'm going to bring up that shot, and I can, in fact, move that shot around the screen losslessly. That means I'm not losing any quality, and I can do that. So now if I duplicate that shot, I've got two of them now. I'm going to rename this one Main Camera. And the reason that I duplicated that is because now I have one that's already zoomed in at 720p from a 1080p source. I'm going to select my main camera. There it is. And you'll see that now with my main camera zoomed in like that, I can move like that or I can move like that. So let's start with me. There's me. Okay, duplicate it again. Bring up that shot and move it over to my co-host chair. So if I click to enable smooth transitions on my shots here, uh, then you'll see that what I can do is take the shot from me, click on the next one, and it automatically pans over to the uh, person who's sitting next to me. It's perfect. It's a great economical way to be able to use, for example, just one HD webcam, which costs about $50 to $60. If you go to our website, cat5.tv slash cam, you'll see it there. And then you're able to move around that scene uh, losslessly and be able to make it look like you've got either multiple cameras in the case where you use the cut or you can use smooth transition and it will actually pan as if there's somebody operating your camera for you. To help you set up your lossless digital zoom, I'm going to put that up on the screen now. Feel free to pause the video so that you can get your camera all set up. So if your system's not performing quite as well as what you're seeing here, I'm going to give you a couple of tips. First of all, remember that 1080p is a lot for your system to process. It's got to be a pretty fast computer. You've got to have good uh, hard drive read and write. We have three hard drives in a RAID 0 for our reads and two hard drives in a RAID 0 for our writes. So anything that's happening is happening between those five hard drives and they're all RAID 0. Our data storage is done on a separate server, so we're not concerned about data loss if the drive crashes or anything like that. It would be devastating to the current broadcast, but would not uh, affect past broadcasts and things like that. So very important. But aside from performance, keep in mind, as I said before, you have to have each USB camera on its own separate USB card. Ours are PCI Express X1s. Um, and so I only plug in one camera to each card. It's very important that you're not sharing it with any other devices, you're not sharing that bus, and you certainly are not plugging into your motherboard because guaranteed your motherboard is going to have other USB devices running off that bus that you may not even know about. For example, my computer has a card reader. Did you know that that's USB? If your laptop, if you're using a laptop, has a built-in webcam, that's actually USB. So you may think, well, I only have this one camera plugged into my USB bus. Well, really, no, if you're plugged into the motherboard or a laptop, you're you're actually using the USB bus that is uh, part of the, the whole grand scheme of things as far as the system is concerned. So in our case, we have three individual USB 3 cards. Very important. We went with USB 3 instead of USB 2, even though the cameras would function with USB 2, because USB 3 gives you that added bandwidth. So if it's going to come really close to maxing out a USB 2 card, it's going to come nowhere close to maxing out a USB 3 card at 5 gigabits a second versus USB 2, which is 480 megabits per second. So big difference there. You want to go with the USB 3 option. The cards for us, we're only $12 each, so it's really economical. It's really worth doing. 
So that said, if your system is unable to do what we're doing here today, there is another option for 1080p lossless zoom. I'm going to show you that now, and it is relying entirely and exclusively on Microsoft's drivers. So watch what we're going to do. I'm going to, in fact, go to my sources, show source settings, and I'm going to set my camera down to 720p. Now that may be the case. That may be what you need to do if your system is unable to process in Wirecast the full 1080p. Because remember, Wirecast is decoding the 1080p compressed signal from the camera. It's doing a whole lot of conversions. It's doing live CGI on top of that. It's doing transition effects. It's doing encoding to the hard drive. It's doing encoding to the stream. It's very heavy what this program has to do. But as I said, it does it really, really well. And as long as you understand the inner workings of how codecs work and how uh, the actual frame sizes affect your performance and things like that, and as long as you've got a fairly decent system that's able to handle what it is that you're trying to pump through it, you'll be able to do this. In my case, let's pretend that we don't have a good enough system so we can only do up to 720p, but oh, we really wish we could do that digital zoom losslessly. We can actually create a 720p lossless zoom using the Microsoft LifeCam drivers themselves. So what we'll do is we'll go back over to Telestream Wirecast. Remember that I've already zoomed in on this, so now this is going to be lossy because my source is actually 720p. So I'm going to remove that, delete, let's delete all those sources because they were designed for 1080p. Let's create a new shot for the Robbie shot. And there we go. So now we have a true 720p source going into a 720p canvas. So now what I can do is if you click down here, you'll see that you have three, in my case three, because I've got three Microsoft LifeCam cameras, three LifeCam dashboards. So I'm going to single click on the one that corresponds to my camera. You'll be able to determine which one that is by going into settings, properties of one of them, turn off autofocus, and adjust your focus. And if it works, for that camera, you know that, hey, I'm on the right camera, obviously. So while we're looking at the focus, fix that. You don't want to use autofocus at any time when you're doing a live broadcast. Make sure you turn off white balance and exposure autom automation and uh, adjust those to a setting that's going to look really good for you and match it up with all of your cameras as well so that they all look the same as far as the colorization, the saturation, the contrast. So beyond that, now that we're using the Microsoft LifeCam drivers and the source is going in at 720p to Wirecast on the 720p canvas, I can use the zoom tool built into this driver. And that, of course, is also lossless. You can see that it doesn't give me quite as much control and of course, if I brought up this, I can't actually move it around on the canvas in Wirecast because remember, Wirecast thinks it's a 720p camera at this point. But of course, the Microsoft drivers know otherwise. So here I am zoomed in 720p losslessly on the 1080p camera, and this is done strictly with the drivers. What's nice about this for you is that this does not use the amount of resources of running in 1080p mode. So you're able to get that lossless zoom at 720, but you're actually running at 720p. So that way you're using a lot less resources. Things are running really smooth even on a slower system. Couple more things that I'd like to show you tonight with Telestream Wirecast. Let's bring up our camera source here, and we're gonna add, first of all, a sound card. So I've clicked on the add button down here. That's added a, a media layer here and I'm gonna to click to add my audio mixer. It would say line in or something like that, and I'm gonna click on it, and now it's assigned line in to that particular uh, scene. It's on the layers. So now if I highlight that layer, you'll see that my levels on the right-hand side here are moving around. They weren't before because I didn't have an audio capture device. So make sure that you create an audio device on all of your tracks that is that corresponds to what you want to be doing uh, with that audio track. So in our case, because it's coming off of the mixer, I've assigned my line in as the audio device for that. Let's create another layer here, and we're going to go a text layer, and let's just add something like that. Click on text and go Robbie Ferguson category, whoa, category 5.tv, something along those lines. So now if I click on that, now I've got a title as well. Really the only thing that we have left to do to really get into Telestream Wirecast is making sure that we can broadcast to the web, making sure that we can record to disk. 
So I'm going to show you that now, keeping in mind that there are obviously so many different things that you can do here, so many different ways that you can set up your cameras and your effects and the way that you want to transition between them. But I'm going to leave that up to you. I'm going to let you experiment, and you can in fact download a free trial of Wirecast at cat5.tv slash Wirecast. Give it a try, see how it performs on your system, see if it's going to do really well for you, and then you can take the next step. Let's take a look at how we can set this up to broadcast. I'm going to go broadcast, broadcast settings in Wirecast. I'm going to add a new uh, stream here. And first of all, I'm going to choose an encoder preset. This is going to be for our broadcast. So if I have a really good internet connection, I might choose flash high bandwidth 16 over 9. Let's click on it. And we're going to click edit to see what that entails. You'll see that it is 960 by 540. 600 kilobits per second. So if you have a one megabit connection and you're not doing anything else online, you'll probably be able to withstand 600 kilobits per second. If you have way more than that, you might try HD bandwidth and look at that and you see that that is a thousand kilobits per second. So if you have say four megabits per second upload, you'll definitely have enough to, to handle that. Then you start to run into will your viewer be able to stream it down to them? Maybe it's going to be too much for them, in which case uh, you might want to bring it back a little bit. Of course, you're also able to create your own by going new and you'll see that we actually use our own custom uh, encoders here and you can go through and set everything up the way that you like. So in our case, we're going to go with the de facto flash high band with 16 over 9. We're going to choose justin.tv. You can choose any of these options and we're going to be able to stream just by entering our username there and then clicking on generate RTMP. So now we want to add the ability to record to disk as I was saying earlier. So I'm going to click on add a, a new output here, highlight that, and we're going to go with flash HD bandwidth 16 over 9 and hit edit. And you'll see here now I've got the defaults from Flash HD bandwidth 16 over 9, but I want to go new, and I'm going to call this my preset for uh, present. How did I do that? Preset for record to disk, okay, and hit OK. The reason that I wanted to do that is now I can manipulate these settings without messing up the original uh, Flash HD bandwidth uh, settings. So I'm going to change that to 2000 kilobits per second because I know that I'm actually recording this to disk. I know that my canvas is 720p, so that's what I'm going to set. Of course, if you were running in 1080p, you could set those to 1080p. Make sure you set to H.264 for your encoder. That's important. And of course, everything else looks okay. You might increase the sound quality, 192 or whatever you want to do. And then hit save. Now, this is important. What we need to do now that we've created that is Again, click on our encoder preset. Notice that it's left it at flash HD bandwidth 16 over 9. I want to actually change that to my preset for record to disk. Now, choose our destination as record to disk. Tell it where you want to save it to. You can browse and change your type to MPEG4. Now, when I save that, I'm going to actually be able to record to disk by simply clicking on record. So now I'm recording. This is what it looks like at 720p, just as we've set it up right here, right now. This is recording directly off of Wirecast during this demonstration. So now that we've accomplished all that, we can feel confident in using Telestream Wirecast. And go back to here, click on our blank shot, and fade to black. So there you have it. That's essentially how we do things here at Category 5 Technology TV. I hope that you've learned lots. I hope that you had fun. And, of course, if you have any questions, just pop us an email live at Category5.tv. And I do encourage you, especially if you're considering setting up some kind of an online broadcast or if you're a church that wants to be able to broadcast your services, if you want to just be able to record and make it look really good and then broadcast it through RSS, having pre-recorded to disk, whatever it is that you're looking to do, if Telestream Wirecast looks like the thing for you, make sure you check them out, cat5.tv slash Wirecast. And again, if any questions are raised, make sure you pop us an email live at category5.tv. For Category 5 Technology TV, I'm Robbie Ferguson. Category 5 TV is a production of Prodigy Digital Solutions and is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 2.5 Canada. Thanks for watching.